Hello students, I'm Imani Sharma, your educator. I warmly welcome you all in this platform where we in today's video are going to discuss about some important feminist theorists who have been there. The works that we constantly have been seeing jo question paper mein, they ask these questions especially related to the subtitles of these works. So who are we going to talk about in today's video? We are going to talk about Sandra Gilbert and Susan Gubar. These are the two prominent figures of the 20th century who came together, collaborated together and then produced some important works and even their works were singular in nature at times as well. Right? But majority of works that we are going to cover in this lecture are mostly the ones which in which they both have collaborated together. Now, in the previous videos, we all have been talking about feminist literary theory that how it tries to challenge the societal role of patriarchy and how it tries to draw the distinction between the male and female gender that has been somewhere or the other perpetually conditioned into the mindset of the males as well as the females as well. The other day I was reading one quote from Instagram and I saw this very particular thing happening there where the quote goes like that men uh, are also the ones who are very very much harmed by the patriarchal thinking that they have since their child, uh, you know, childbirth and also all these things that we see that when the children are born in a house, how the things are created there, how and what sort of atmosphere is created, right? Now, uh, if we talk about feminist literary theory, here we try to uh, work on the things, the works written by different different writers of different different centuries. How even if there was a female writer, unke works mein hume kya ek undertone milti hai dekhne ke liye, just mein we see some sort of discrimination that even being a female, she is writing against women. Or if we see that men are writing against women or if we see that women are writing in the favor of women. So this is what we try to underline and underpin here if we move ahead with this type of theory, right? Now moving forward with the introductory sphere here, Sandra Gilbert was born in the year 1936 whereas if we see Susan Gubar, she was born in the year 1944. They are the ones, as I already told you in the beginning of the video, that in dono ne collaboration kari hai and hence their names have been associated with each other and they have uh, been often termed as Gilbert and Gubar, right? Played a crucial role in developing and legitimizing the feminist literary theory, the work that they are going to deal with, uh, the major work from where the collaboration started, the mad woman in the attic which time and again have been asked in the net examination that who is the mad woman in the attic, um, you know, Gubar and Gilbert, we, you know, how they are trying to talk about which is that woman. So, we are going to talk about that as well, right? Moving ahead, we see that there has been one critic named Lorraine York who has said about both of them, about both of them that how their recognition has showcased their influential role in the feminist literary scholarship. That how they have presented things with a new point of view that any woman who does not seem to fit into the role of a normal woman, a normal wife, who cannot confine to that role. She is supposedly, uh, you know, being uh, the one just jail me dal diya jata hai, not literally but metaphorically I am trying to say uh, about that particular thing, right? They are co-edited Northern Anthology of Women's Literature which was published in the year 1985. So, this can also be asked as a question in the net examination. They have co-edited an anthology as well, right? And individual works are considered canonical in the field of feminist literary theory as I already told you in the beginning of the lecture. This thing happens with them, right? And how Bertha Mason, which is here, how unko she is not given the privilege and it is said that maybe that's some sort of a soul or maybe that's some sort of a mad woman who's living in the attic. But later on we come to know that it was not a mad woman. She had been considered a mad woman and later on we come to know when the layers are, you know, 
जस्ट लाइक अनियन को पील करते हुए लेयर्स निक, निकलती हैं उसी तरीके से वी सी द स्टोरी ऑल्सो अनफोल्डिंग इन डिफरेंट डिफरेंट मैनर्स एंड दे हैव ट्राई टू प्रोवाइड अस विद अ डिफरेंट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एज वी हैव नॉट रियली सीन इन द नॉवल राइट so their collaboration was something which developed organically because they had similar interests which were complementary and unique at the same time so both of them if we talk about sandra gilbert she was a phd from columbia university specialized in poetry particularly focusing on lawrence's major poems so lawrence we see was a major novelist but now we see someone so initial phase se hame dekhne ke liye mil raha hai that they are not going to focus on the canonical uh, mainstream things but rather are focusing on some new perspective so lawrence was majorly as i told you famous for his novels but somebody here took a chance and stood up and then started reading the canonical poems of the author she is also an accomplished poet herself if we try to talk about gubbar she was the phd she held a phd degree from the university of iowa novel form so one is majorly interested in the poetry form the other one is interested in the novel with her doctoral research centered on the tudor romance and the 18th century fiction now you see the tudor romance the tudor dynasty which was established back then with the henrys and now we see that 18th century tak aate aate how those things have changed how she tries to portray that one thing in her thesis so one is in the form of you know hum keh sakte hai ki bahut bluntly they are trying to express their views one in novel and the other in poetry and now they will collaborate and think about things through a new lens or a new perspective So their collaboration began in 1973 at Indiana University co-teaching on a course on literature by women. So this is where both of them come together in the year 1973 where they come and they teach on different topics. During their collaboration they identified thematic and imagistic coherence across diverse authors that how different different authors somewhere or the other try to portray the image of women in one light chahe wo ek age se the ya dusri age se but we see the image being somewhere or the other similar to what was there in the previous times so they try to see this coherence coherence matlab ek sequential manner mein what they are seeing is that even if we talk about someone from the 15th century and somebody from the 18th century some sort of thinking about women has not get changed over the centuries right including jane austen charlotte bronte emily dickinson virginia woolf and sylvia plath right so uh, she and gubbar gilbert and gubbar both of them come together and they take these authors for reference part and all of them you see because of the fact that literature was uh, jo course ye log kar rahe the that was literature by women so we see them studying these women specifically so the work the mad woman in the attic in the exploration culminated in the ground breaking work now here i give you one pyq this has been asked as a pyq that they have asked the subtitle of the work what have they asked they have asked for the subtitle of the work here and they have tried to ask much and more detail about it that uh, ek hi title mein se alag alag questions they have framed right so Gilbert and Gubbar precisely define the images and themes that constitu constitute this female literacy and literary tradition. I would want to read an excerpt from the essay that they wrote that came to be known as the Mad Woman in the Attic. So let's just read, and I quote: "Images of enclosure and escape, fantasies in which maddened double functioned as a social surrogates for docile selves." metaphors of physical discomfort manifested in frozen landscapes and fiery interiors along with obsessive depictions of diseases like anorexia agoraphobia and claustrophobia this we see the how the women have been described agar hum bertha mason ki bhi baat karte hain when she is also described in rain air we see her being an image there who was not mad at all if we try to look at it through that perspective 
बिकॉज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट रोचेस्टर डिड नॉट लाइक हर एंड उसके उसकी मेंटल हेल्थ कंडीशन को वो समझ नहीं पाया दैट्स वाई ही टर्म हर एज समन हु वॉज अ मैड वुमन and there can be multiple perspectives to the same thing you can have a different perspective than mine but this was their perspective i read this short story the yellow wallpaper usme bhi aise dikhate hain that how the yellow wallpaper of a room signifies the mental health of the woman and how if she keeps on looking at the ceiling the wallpaper so on and so forth she feels discomforted as well राइट सो इट्स वेरी नाइस शॉर्ट स्टोरी विच इज रिटर्न एंड आजकल के जो पेपर्स आ रहे हैं वी आर वी हैव सीन अ पैटर्न नाउ इन दिस रीसेंट पेपर ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री डिसम्बर ओनली देव आस क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द सेम देव आस क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम फोर फोर शॉर्ट स्टोरीज आउट ऑफ विच वन वॉज आई थिंक फ्रॉम अ कलेक्शन अ शॉर्ट स्टोरी कलेक्शन फ्रॉम आर के नारायण एंड वन वॉज फ्रॉम गुस्ताफ लॉबर्ट एंड देर द टू राइटर्स इज वेल हु आई कैन नॉट लिटरे रिकॉल राइट नाउ so you cannot miss short stories as well right so we see these things happening the prevalent theme of imprisonment is seen there and the yearning for liberation that i want to be liberated and she we see bertha mason how uh, pitiful is her condition but we see that the way that it has been depicted by a female and through a female's lens and point of view it operates within the bounds of patriarchal aesthetics and poetics how the patriarchy has tried to term it as we see in the work and it conveys involves temporal and spatial constraints temporal and spatial time and space ke sath jo constraints hai that are also being seen in the story so the mad woman that we see in the work is none other than bertha mason right so we have the list of important works that are written here i told you already you can take a screenshot but i'd rather suggest you if you are making notes while watching this video take a note of these things right away do not procrastinate do not put things on the other day ki main screenshot se note down kar lunga ya kar lungi i would want that you guys note it down right away i'll just read down the names here the mad woman in the attic published in 1979 with the subtitle the woman writer and the 19th century literary imagination then we see shakespeare's sisters with the subtitle and susan and gilbert uh, gubar and gilbert are two figures jinme se majorly uh, and we have seen show walter as well these three are the figures jisme se majorly we see the subtitles being asked so that thing is important feminist essays on women poets 1979 the norton anthology of literature 1985 they edited this one no man's land the place of the woman writer in the 20th century which came in different volume so volume 1 came to be known as the war of the words in 1988 then came the second volume which came to be known as six changes in the year 1989 and then came the third volume that came to be known as letters from the front 1944 so you see these works serve as important things to make your you know crisp and crunchy notes if we try to talk about it in that sense that you need to revise them at the last moment so you should prepare these things from the videos that are being you know made for you all when it concerns literary theory i'll see you guys again in another video thank you so much and have a good day bye bye